Hello everybody and welcome back to Operation Logistics where we're working on the get nearest entry point and I just realized that we need a second, well technically at this point, a third new method and this is going to be public int, right? An integer? Yeah, I think this is going to be an int. Get nearest biome hex index within world hex. And this is going to take a vector3 position and a world hex within. So this is going to return the nearest biome hex to position as an index, or rather the nearest biome hex index to position within, within, the given world hex. Okay, so essentially what this is going to do is we're going to say world hex, well we, we already have a reference to world hex from within, so we want to do float nearest dist equals mathf.infinity, yet again, int nearest equals negative one for now, return int, or return int, return nearest. And then this here is going to very simply give us our biome hex by saying something along the lines of within the world hex we need to get all the biome hexes. So essentially what we need to do is we need to say for int i equals zero, i is less than, it's going to be 73, but I want to say within dot biome hexes dot count i plus plus. And then we're going to say if our position minus get biome hex position, which takes an int three, we technically, for the biome hex position, I believe, don't care about the building hex position, correct? Uh, get biome hex position, world hex, biome hex. Yeah, we don't care. So we get biome hex position, new int 3, and we pass in our within dot hex index i. And we don't care about the building hex, so we'll just make that be negative one. And this is within that dot square magnitude is less than nearest dist. No, not a particle animator. I'm trying to make curly braces here. <laughs> there we go. Then we just want to do the same thing here. So we'll we'll just do float dist equals this, just so that we don't have to type it all out again and calculate it multiple times. So if dist is is less than nearest dist, we need a uh, semicolon, that tends to help. If dist is less than nearest dist, then nearest equals i, and nearest dist equals dist, and then we return nearest. So that's going to get us our nearest biome hex to a position within a specified world hex. With that, we can very easily just pass in that as our current. So get nearest biome hex within world hex, and we want to pass in our position, and we want to pass in our world hex that we are currently in. That gets us our nearest biome hex, and then we just need to grab our nearest road entry, which would, of course, B, get building hex position. So we need to get our position for this. I'm going to do the same thing we did up above. Float dist equals this. So it's just a little bit easier to work with. So if our position minus get building hex position, this is going to be current dot square magnitude 
is less than nearest dist. Actually, what am I talking about? Distance is just equal to this, but we want a closing parenthesis there. There we go. So that's our distance. Easy enough. We are going to need to set our current dot building hex to be equal to building hex manager dot road entries i dot and this is lowercase there we go building hex manager dot road entries i dot and this is going to be what location hex index hex index okay so that's our building hex index. We can't just use i because that's 1 through 6, and that's not what our road entry index indices are. But we grab our distance here, and then if dist is less than nearest dist, then we can say that nearest equals current, like that, and then nearest dist equals dist. Just like that. We can now grab our nearest world hex that is not the world hex that we're in. And then from there, grab the nearest biome hex within that world hex. And then from there, grab the nearest entry point in terms of a building hex from that biome hex. And with that, we should be able to come down here. And now we should actually be able to get rid of our issues that we've got going on here with the switch statement. So at this point, we should be able to just comment out this switch statement in, in its entirety at long, long last. And once again, I went one curly brace too far. Yep, come back up here. There we go. So, we should be able to say something along the lines of world hex other hex equals manager dot... And, I mean, realistically, we should just be able to say something like biome hexes i dot neighbors dot add. And then we would add in the, uh, the nearest entry point. So that would be manager dot get nearest entry point and then we would pass in our current position which is of course manager dot get building hex position of new building dot location and then our exclusion would be this now that gets an int 3 Cannot convert from int3 to, to a list of int3s. What? We're trying to add it. Returns an int3. Oops, I just closed hex store, I think. Oh well. <laughs> we can open that again later if we need to. I think maybe we've got a parenthetical issue. Let's see here. This is the closer. This one goes there. No, there's no parenthetical issue. Neighbors is a list of a list of int3. Right, 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 right. Because we need to pass in an index here of new building dot location dot building hex okay so theoretically that should grab our nearest entry point anytime it goes off tile and it only ever connects to one so should be good I'll be deleting these once we know that this is working, but let's go ahead and test this quick.
Come on, compile. One of these days it'll compile. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So, let's uh, go ahead and run this. We'll see how much slower this is. It should be slightly slower, but not enormously slower. Our normal benchmark is 20 to 25 seconds to load. So we'll see if this is any more or any less. It doesn't feel substantially slower just now. Maybe a little slower. Twenty-eight seconds. So yeah, it's a little slower. But if it works, that'll be worthwhile, right? So let's just let's just test this. I'm gonna buy a piece of land right here. I'm gonna demolish it. Create a root. Select the root. Zoom out. And we were in here. Yep, I can see it right there. We are going to go straight up over here. We want to go all the way over here. So let's go into edit root mode and. Bam. Okay, so that path took a little while. Also, I don't know what's going on with that. But, look at that. It actually worked. It was certainly kind of slow. It was certainly kind of slow. One thing we could always do is we could break it into coroutines. We could try to optimize it in some way. But overall, it worked. Let's uh let's take it into here. So we're in edit root mode again, and we're just going to come down to here. As succeeded with 104 steps. So I mean, you can see that there's definitely a few issues here overall. But yeah, that uh, seems to be working. Now, it's not intended that roots will ever be realistically this long. But, like, theoretically, we could then bring it all the way up over here, and I expect this to take quite a long time to pathfind. <laughs> yeah, this is taking quite a long time. Unacceptably long. We may have to tune our heuristic. That's a possibility. It's definitely an exponential length. I mean, this is a lot of steps that it's going through to get here. I just want to know how long this takes, though. I'd have to go back in the VOD because we don't have a timer to know when exactly I clicked, but this is definitely in the realm of minutes at this point. I think I clicked at like 12.20 on the recording, so it's been like a minute and a half. But I want this to succeed. And I think it'll get there. I definitely think optimizing the pathfinding for these very long routes is probably gonna be the next project here. And also, it means that theoretically, like, if there isn't a, a tile here, but there is one here and here, this guy would connect up over here, or over here. And so going off map isn't really going off map. It's just that the roads kind of end and loop back in with this current system, which I like a lot, actually. That's a, it's a great solution. What's not a great solution is just how long this pathfinding is taking. That's a little too long, I'm going to go ahead and say. 
seeing as we're coming up on three minutes. <laughs> It's definitely exponential. How many steps is this even? I don't know. It's going to be kind of exciting. I'm getting pretty close to giving up on this, though. I mean, it is time to put a cut in, and it's also the end of this particular recording session for Operation Logistics. So I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll just put a cut in here, and next episode we will uh, start working on optimizing these long-haul routes. <laughs> because these generations are uh, slightly ridiculous. And I have to assume that the open list and the closed list are so huge at this point. Like, that's probably what's slowing us down, even. I would start up... Ta Actually, I can start up Task Manager this way and check what our memory usage is. It's actually only using 5 gigs right now. And that's not getting any bigger. It's holding steady. Interesting. If I pull this over here... It's, it's at 5 gigs right now. It's utilizing 34% of our CPU. We could offload it into a coroutine or try to put it into a another thread, potentially. Hmm. Or we could just try to tweak the heuristic. Just have the heuristic be like the square magnitude instead of the Manhattan distance, perhaps? Because currently... Our heuristic is the Manhattan distance, which is the absolute value of the x difference plus the absolute value of the y difference. And I think the square magnitude would be about as fast? I don't know. Anyway, this has been running for over five minutes at this point. I think it's safe to say that this is a very, very solidly not, <laughs> not acceptable in terms of duration here. That memory is going up somewhat at this point. So that list is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. I definitely think that that's probably something we need to optimize. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put that cut in here, and next episode, we'll look at optimizing that. Now that it's actually working, we can do that. See you all then.